Hello and welcome to SciShow Talk Show, the day on SciShow where we talk to interesting people about interesting stuff and then talk to a bizarre animal. But first, talking to a different bizarre animal, this is Britt Garner <laughs> yeah. of SciShow Psych and of Nature League and, uh, and just of Missoula, Montana. How are you? I am good. Seasons are a thing in Montana. Uh, they sure are. And we didn't get that growing up in Florida. Mm -hmm. And so there's this really neat uh, energy that comes with yeah. some the month of May or like October, just yeah. the changes. So I'm actually I'm actually good. I like the fact that summer is different than February. Yeah. Oh. For example. You're here in part to give us an update on how the whole world is doing. <laughs> you know, I, I was first sort of exposed to this idea that like, you know, there are mass extinction events. And uh, I knew about that. And then mm -hmm. somebody was like, we're in the middle of one. And we did it. And I'm like, I am uncomfortable about that. Sir. The <laughs> Rude. Sir. <laughs> let's, let's take Rewind. It, let's pack up. I. A lot of accusations I'm not. on the table here. <laughs> exactly. Thank you. There is a decrease in biodiversity happening on the planet. And we are studying that. And right. lots of people are. But recently, a lot of the people got together to they talk about it. They did. They and did. And present some ideas and findings. And you know about that, and I do not. This is great news. So I news. want you to tell me about it. <laughs> Lovely. So what's really neat about this, and, and this is recent as of, as of filming this, this is uh, things that came out um, in May, this incredible thing exists, and it's called the, unfortunately, IPBES. Horrible to say. Some PR guy yeah. really screwed that one up, because like, the IPBES report. <laughs> Wow, yeah, they really yeah, did make it they hard. They really did. Yeah. And so the IPCC maybe sounds familiar, the Intergovernmental, the Panel on Climate Change, right? But it's like, hey, we're saying this is a threat mm -hmm. to humanity. That this, this is a threat that crosses the boundaries of a country, that crosses the boundaries of, mm -hmm. of geography, all these things. And we're saying, let's talk about what to do, but also gather the best available data and go from there and make choices and plans and actions from that. So right. the things like the Paris Agreement, the information scientifically that's there comes from something like the IPCC, right. these huge working groups. So um, a, a little bit back, some biologists came together and they're like, cool, great idea. What if, hear me out, can we have one of those, but for biodiversity? And give it a bad name. And make it like way longer than IPCC. What is it again? IPBES. International, intergovernmental <laughs> so, total, panel. Pa no, intergovernmental panel on policy for biodiversity and ecosystem services. It's horrible. It, you That's, it's terrible. That's very much what an ecosystem ecologist would they, name They something. so would, yeah. right? Couldn't it just be like life panel? Yeah. LP? <laughs> Like, why didn't they call me? Anyway, yeah. so, we, so we now have this IPBES. And again, just think about this as a global collaborative of scientists, both governmental, non-governmental, in academia, not academia, just mm. people who collect data, analyze things, and come together and say, not only here's the sitch, mm -hmm. but what do we do about the sitch? Right. The interesting thing about ecosystem services packed onto here, the word service and this is, again, like an entire, this is you and I just like going on for an yeah. hour some other time. But I really do think it's important to point out the connotation and the ethics and what underpins that word. Sure. To say that yeah. we are being serviced by something is, is very much so saying we're here and this is here. Yeah. And I mean, I think that if you're going to get a bunch of governments and a bunch of capitalists, because they all are, like, to agree that we need to take something seriously, then you have to make of a value-based, capitalism-based yes. argument. It's and that's the way, what's happening. It's the way to bring people to the table. Yeah. And I understand that. It's just not the reason bring, why you, I come to the you table. You want to bring it up. You at least want to put it out there and say... I, I like the idea of people coming to the table because of the intrinsic mm -hmm. value of, I sure. like the earth better when these things exist. Yeah. And maybe I never see them. Maybe we never interact, whatever. It's yeah. one piece. But yes, to bring full countries, I'm not naive, right? I, yeah. I totally get it. It's bringing people to the table. So yes, biodiversity and ecosystem services. Um, How are they? Yeah, so not good. Um, yeah. So on May 6th-ish, uh, they the IPBES, which again is like through the UN, released their executive summary. And they said, guys, here's what we have. We've been working for years, hundreds of scientists on this to say, 
how are we doing mm -hmm. uh, life on earth and also the services rendered um, by that life on earth. And so they only put out like the, the summary report. The full report comes out later in 2019 and is expected to be like 1,500 pages, which I will go through at that time and we'll talk again. <laughs> It'll be great. Um, and then in, in the very end of May, uh, they release a draft of six chapters. And these six chapters are things like what is the state of, they say nature. And if you mm -hmm. go to their like appendix, nature is saying mainly biodiversity and some other things. What is the state of that contribution to humans? And then what is the state of, so like nature itself, the state of nature's contributions. But then the lovely thing about this report is that they spend a lot of time talking about the future, mm -hmm. what to do, transformative change, where do we go from here, mm -hmm. and how to incorporate these things. So for this first, again, we only have the executive kind of summary to go on right now, but there are a couple of things that made major headlines. Mm -hmm. You may have seen... There were some lovely things to wake up to on, on May 6th, which were one million species threatened with extinction or everything is dying. Yeah. I didn't actually see that one. The first one I definitely saw. <laughs> I'm sure someone yeah. wrote that headline. Sure. So this, there was this one million species mm -hmm. uh, stat pulled out. And I think that while that is true as far as threat, threat does not mean right. a now. Threat is has a temporal a time component. Mm -hmm. It's saying, here's a thing that could happen, right. but it's not gone yet. Yeah. So I like to be really careful with this language. And unfortunately, the headlines kind sure. of reporting headlines. were not, not, not so nuanced. I know about headlines. <laughs> you, I, you know, I write, I you write got headlines. This. I understand what you're doing. You got this. You got um, this. Yeah. But a tremendous amount of work and time has gone into this. Right. A lot of people hours uh, have been yeah. spent on this. An and incredible amount. There's the, the concerns being laid out. Um, is this sort of giving us better perspective than we had before this report came out? I think so, but only if we actually look at the the details and not it's not knowing every statistic, but it's knowing this versus this. Mm -hmm. How is how much impact does this have versus this thing? Mm -hmm. Or in terms of full like groups of species, you know, how is this big group doing versus this one? I think mm -hmm. those are what we right. need. And in, and and the way that it's been reported is just a full, right. here's the things. So I do think we actually uh, know quite a bit more now. For example, um, things about the idea of how we are transforming um, the surface of this planet we live on. So the we being humans. Like 40% of, of land now is, is agricultural or urban. Mm -hmm. The fact that only in the last few years, the human population crossed over the halfway mark. So now more than half of all humans live in a urban area. So that mm -hmm. kind of transformation. One thing that caught me is uh, fisheries, actually. So I've I've been under the impression, and it's not incorrect. It's just not complete mm -hmm. that agriculture is the the big no no. Um, but parts of these I draft mean, I chapters, like it. I love Oreo cookies, all various things created through agriculture. Chapter seven is actually on Oreos? Nabisco's Oreos. Yeah. Okay, wow. Right. It's a draft still. <laughs> Keep in mind this will come out later in 2019, but we'll make yeah. sure to unpack that. Right. So 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 agriculture is is a thing, but it turns out that fisheries uh -huh. is actually I think they stated something like four times more of an impact. There's wow. always impact on what? Right. That question matters. Again, this is not full report, but just these like this versus this. Mm -hmm. That was new to me. Well, sure. yeah. I mean, it's a, the ocean obviously is most of the surface of the right. planet. It's also most of the ecosystems right. on the planet. Because not like on land, you have sort of a few tiers where you can have ecosystems happening like just below the surface, totally. on the surface, in canopies. But in the ocean, it's like the top that that's just like layers and layers and layers of potential ecosystems yeah. there. Um, there's a lot of livable space in oceans, a lot more than there is on the land. Totally. We extract a huge amount right. of just protein, you know, a huge yeah. amount of calories from yeah. the oceans. And the the people and places that are consuming these things in these ratios, that is actually also of huge importance. So for us uh, living here, so we're filming in Missoula, Montana, right, mm -hmm. in the United States, perhaps you and I and the majority of people where we live don't have fish as their main protein yeah. to live. Yeah. However, millions, mm -hmm. hundreds of millions of people around the world, that is life for them. That mm -hmm. is my child surviving right. and having nutrition, right? And so so it's also one of those like, check yourself. Right, you know, of course. What's it like where you live yeah. versus the world? Yeah. And I like checking myself. Right. It, Which is why it's healthy, I say that good. like, 
agriculture is a problem, fisheries are a problem, but also like I am pro agriculture. Right. We're pro Oreo. <laughs> I think Look, if we we're not if we all Oreos. if we stopped agriculture today, there'd be some some pretty big Maybe hiccups some we'd have to work through. <laughs> Some things we might need to iron out. Yeah. <laughs> Just a few minor details. Yeah. So are there action items that are gonna come out of this? Yes. Okay. Yes. And this is and this is what gives me hope in something like this. Unfortunately, this is not so sexy to report on. It's easier to report on the things the that are problem. like, look, you know, 30% yeah. of corals, sharks and their relatives, my poor baby sharkies, mm-hmm. they're not looking good, right? Uh the fact that, yeah, the the jungle systems, all these things, yeah. The picture is not good. But to not then look at these two of the six chapters are about Mm -hmm. like laying out plans and and transformative change. Because again, a million species threatened with extinction is not a million species extinct. Right. And so that's what excites me. Because otherwise Well, it's just terribly depressing. Well, it is. And and so, (laughs) and as as you know, like uh, I work within the field of international biodiversity conservation. It's a yeah. Very depressing daily existence if we don't think about actionable items. And that's yeah. just true for life, right? We want to yeah. we want to mean something and make some difference. Like you and I have just spoken about just before in passing, like humans are incredible, not only in their capacity to affect things, but to care about things. Like, yeah. and that's a beautiful thing. So um your notes. Okay, you got your action items written on a list there? I <laughs> literally what? have a to-do list from yeah. the UN. Okay, tell me what to do, <laughs> Brett. Should I stop eating salmon? Well, who can say? Um, so this is fun. They've done. They've gotten very clever, very high end. Um, they've got some metaphors, some graphics. It's all very confusing. What they've decided with this report is they're talking about levers and then leverage points. So in the report, they have five main levers, mm-hmm. um, and they are saying here are these things that multiple actors, so individual citizens, communities, public sector or, or private sector, governments, all these things, can work these levers, but apply them at leverage points. Right. Because the lever is no good if you don't have a f- fulcrum. We need a fulcrum. Engineering. <laughs> that's, that's physics. Hank I knows that, this. I learned that in elementary Are we proud? School. He knows this. <laughs> Thank you, fulcrum. None of, no individual part of my body is useful. We need leverage points. Okay. Great. What are you, so what so, are so here, So here are the levers. Uh-huh. First one, incentives and capacity building. I like this idea. So we're talking sure. about bringing people to the table. Incentives. So the idea of maybe we have businesses like not just write a check to be able to wreck something. Maybe instead businesses have a better incentive to, to not yeah, sure. build on new land, do these other things, right? Um, cross-sectoral cooperation. I love that. Okay. Yeah. So different sectors have to talk to one another. What's a sector? I think they mean so like, I think they mean societally. So so perhaps like both in disciplines. So the idea of like engineers speaking to right. um, economists, speaking to ecologists. Sure. But I was also under the impression that it meant also the public speaking to governments, Mm -hmm. speaking to like those. I think it's pretty broad. Again, we'll get new details as they come out. These are just like the fancy little Uh bullet points they've got. Preemptive action. We're really bad about thinking long-term. I think that's just a thing for life on Earth. Like even though evolution is long-term, like it's very hard. To be fair, we're better at it than any other species. We're just still bad at it. You don't know. You have no idea what ants are doing. Look, it's true. It, it's you true. do not know. It's true. I've never talked to an ant hive, about this. Hive, in, hive insects. I'm not messing around. Yeah, Neither think, are there. Yeah. I, like no. I'm maps. They have full. Ma- There's a they, queen ant right now. That's like guys. Leverage, leverage points. points. <laughs> <laughs> I know it, and I'll find her. Yeah. And she'll be glorious. Yes. Preemptive action. It's hard, but just the idea mm. of what we're doing right now then applies. Lovely. Um, Decision making in context of resilience and uncertainty. This I love. Oh, this how is do you what do we that? Are, but this is I what we all do here, that, right? I need that for normal daily life. Yes. How do I make decisions when I have uncertainty? I think it's lovely to see the word uncertainty within any mm-hmm. kind of scientific report because that makes me feel like right. these people care about the reality right. of they, what science is. Yeah, they get, they get it. They understand that. And, and But like with the IPCC, we've learned that like, Uncertainty can sometimes open you up to criticism from people. You who guys don't, don't know anything. Don't Look at your error bars. Understand how science sure. works. Yeah, and sure. but like obviously, with something as complicated as this, is going to totally. be uncertainty. Totally, totally. And so this idea of 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 making decisions, but knowing that not only we can think about decisions in terms of resilience, but also uncertainty. And I just love mm-hmm. that. And like you said, like everyday life, pretty much right. all of these apply to everything. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then the last one of these levers, which are 
than applied is environmental law and implementation. Sure. And that's big. And, and that's not something I do or mm-hmm. you do. But I know that when I was growing up, I thought that was like maybe a thing I would do. I was like, yeah. oh, law. I can talk and argue <laughs> things. But if it's something I care about, like right. environmental things, you know, mm-hmm. I didn't go that way. But I but I know it's important. I have friends who do that. And like, you know, it, there's two pieces of that. There's actually like there's passing laws making it right. so that like we consider externalities when we decide to do stuff as a society is externalities on the externalities list. is leverage point six okay. um, oh you and then and then also actually arguing the law because like it's no right. it's no use if you're not enforcing the law and there's not like a body out there for the for the in, for in the international it's yeah. very hard it's right. very hard even even national, even national it, like you local. have to have someone who will come in and, and actually bring the lawsuit because yeah. oftentimes the government doesn't have the interest or the resources to actually enforce the laws that they pass. Exactly. And then that makes them not not worth what their job is. They must be implemented. Yeah, laws don't do anything unless somebody's enforcing them. Right. So so those are the levers as laid out by the UN's IPBES Mm -hmm. in this in this national report. And so levers. Right. All right, let's talk fulcrum. Let's talk elbows. Are you ready? It's a weird lever. (laughs) Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's all, it's a thing. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the first one, embrace diverse visions of the good life. Okay. I love this. That's nice. It's really nice because this idea of when you, <laughs> and, I, and I would challenge anyone, anyone watching this or yeah. just thinking about this, if you just ask yourself to think for a minute, what is the good life? <laughs> That's such a weird thing to have in a it's governmental wonderful. science How report. Cool is that? Embrace diverse visions of, of, the, a, good of life. the good life. That's yeah. amazing. I, yes, also great advice for just a human. I know. I think this is actually a self-help book. The yeah. human is actually like <laughs> moving into yeah. like Barnes and Noble. Like it's going right, to be like. Right. You have, no like, one's going to buy chicken, our reports. Chicken soup for the teenage soul and then chickens for the anthropocene soul. Yeah. The, I don't know. We'll work on a title. But yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's great. Yeah. I mean, so it's this idea of like, is the good life, does the good life have to be material, right. money, Big mansion, mm-hmm. lots of things, or can the good life be experiences and and non consumption? Right. Um, the idea of embracing that there is more than one mm-hmm. version of that, and some are better than others. Yeah, that's cool. That's yeah. that's cool. Again, to see in a scientific report, it's awesome. And then reduce total consumption and waste. That's just across the board. Yeah. This is one of the most basic things that we can all do just every day. Yeah. Just every day, it. but like we all are, right? And yeah. it's just like checking in on ourselves and yeah. like, where, what can we I do? Mean, the the pressure from society is to sort of do it one way, and and yeah. I think that there there is because you know our retirement are, accounts are tied to the stock market, and because like we are all deeply influenced by advertising, which has been very effective in our society. Right, consumerism feels like the thing to do, and also because like you know fifty years ago, like more and better were very close together. Yeah, and, and for worked. some people, it for some still people. is <laughs> like it, like you do like people do need to consume more resources to have better lives. For some people, that has stopped being true. Totally, and so that idea of diverse visions of that, yeah, yeah. and then con- and then consumption and waste just across the board reduce. Although that will, of course, depend on who you are, where you live, sure. and your situation. Mm-hmm. Um, unleash values in action. I love the verb unleash yeah. in in the yeah. And this is like this is my huge thing that I always talk about whenever we get into life on Earth. Is that guys, it's values all the way down. Yeah. Like the choices and the way that we think about things have been formed since we were little, interacting right. with. Other species, you know. Mm-hmm. So just un- unleashing them. Unleash my values. Just, also great self-help advice. I'm telling you, the UN yeah. is being sneaky. This is <laughs> hands down going to be a bestseller. Yeah. This is just, it's fine. Um, the fourth, reduce inequalities. Now, also very important. huge though to think about the way that human inequality in society can affect non-human species. That blows my mind and is really nice to be reminded of. Mm -hmm. So this can be um, even things like uh, like gender is one of the main pieces of this chapter. So the idea of what um, what women uh, are, uh, what's available, right, in terms of like education resources that can change things like the birth rate and Mm -hmm. like the growth of population and and uh, inequalities in income, inequalities in opportunity. When you have inequalities within the society of a single species, humans, that has a major impact on the rest of of Earth. That's like humbling, terrifying, mm-hmm. and also, okay, got some work to do. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, so reduce inequalities, um, practice justice and inclusion um, in conservation. So, hey, again, just in life, yeah. can, can we make sure that inclusion right. and justice are involved when we talk about conserving right. things? Yeah, because like it's one thing to say, like, Hank, you shouldn't eat 
fish anymore. And I'm like, okay, I could probably pull that off. But if like fish is the only way I get protein, right. that's not a very just no, rule it's, to apply broadly. No, it's not. Exactly. And so this idea, yeah, that leaves it. And then here you go. Internalize externalities and telecouplings. Telecouplings? Tele meaning like far or across and the couplings. I think within here it's kind of specific in terms of like resources and uh, in business. And so the idea oh, of like right. cross continental and cross ocean, right, like right. like goods and trade. Mm -hmm. But I mean, it can mean so much more. Like that word is an interesting yeah. one. Yeah, but and internalizing externalities is the biggest part of like actually doing good environmental work because like the costs of like mining or burning lots of coal like we don't we don't put that cost on the people who are doing the work right. and they, they get the right. profit out of you know doing the thing but the, yeah. the price is not as it's like it's cheaper for them to sell coal than it should be totally because the rest of us are going to have to pay for that mm -hmm. in some way and you know this is you know, in environmental circles sometimes discussed as a subsidy that like sure, we are sure. going to have to like pay to build a wall around Florida. Right. And that is in a way a subsidy for fossil fuel companies. Yeah. Um, because like they're not going to have to pay for that. But it was, you know, ultimately if we had been paying, if there was like a tax on that, that mm -hmm. was like, you know, climate change mitigation tax, then we would be, you know, actually sort of like functional yeah. society <laughs> right. society would be paying the actual price of, of yes. burning fossil fuels. And when those things are not together one to one, it's very hard to track choices, consequences, yeah. and what these things mean, yeah. particularly when money is involved. Yeah. And if, it's also very hard to actually define the, yeah. the value of an externality. Like what <laughs> what is the, the actual cost here? Which is why it's very hard to do. You know, yeah. and also because like we've never done it. Right, 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 right. You know? OPS. This is brand new. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, ne like never can never like tried to add on right. a, a future cost onto the, to a current price, yeah. but like very worth doing and and kind of the only way that you right you can actually cr create a price that accurately reflects the cost of a you know action. Yeah, well, exactly, and so and so that I mean, this entire working group is saying, yeah, that this is important and mm -hmm. needs to start being a thing, right? Yeah. Second to last, ensure technology innovation and uh, investment. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, these things that humans do, that. do really well. Like, let's keep mm -hmm. doing them, but within the frames of these other things and consequences that we've spoken of. Sure. And then uh, this last one um, is all that we will love: the things that we make here all together. Promote education and knowledge generation and sharing. All right. Right. Okay, sure. I know. Let's do that. Let's. I mean, I think we're doing it. Yeah. This is very meta right now. Yeah. yeah where we're the doing. U can the UN get complexly some money? I'll work on that. I yeah, think they'll have a lot email. once they have their self-help book out. They'll have like, the, yeah. <laughs> like all the things they have, like the profit. Yeah. yeah. Now, I will mention the one thing about this knowledge uh, generation and sharing. This includes different knowledge systems. So for the first time, um, a report of this size has made a very large effort and included a lot about indigenous peoples and mm -hmm. local cultures. And as far as what they know and have learned in their own natural history and course of living mm -hmm. um, in those spaces, what is best and the sharing of that knowledge. So it's not just here are these scientific sure. articles published, we need to share it. It is accepting that there are multiple knowledge systems. It doesn't mm -hmm. mean that every single one is equal and everything right. is right. There's rights and wrongs inside of each that we still have to be rational. But we have to keep in mind and have our ear open to right. different knowledge systems. And also so that you can communicate within exactly. those knowledge systems. Totally. If you come into, like, with a, another knowledge system, come in and you're like, here's, here's reality. Right. That's not going to get you very far. No. So you have to, like, recognize the existence of other knowledge systems. Yeah. And you it's, can't communicate. Especially with local, with local communities when you have places of huge biodiversity mm -hmm. that are very, very central and localized. These are people that potentially n know more about these species than, like, sure. any other scientific group, mm -hmm. you know. But it's, so just this idea of it. If this is something you're interested in, if you're watching this and you're interested in the idea of indigenous people and local cultures and nature, um, it's all throughout the report. And it's, um, it's really lovely and fascinating and very cool to see see it detailed detailed out sounds like quite a quite a report to put together i had fun in april yeah just uh, <laughs> just read it yeah just yeah, like just yeah just getting prepped and then it came out and man I, like i was i was like watching teaser trailers and by that i mean paragraphs published <laughs> right. by the un yeah it's the same thing really, yeah you, <laughs> that's how hip i am those are a, my teasers there's a small fan community <laughs> Um, There's four of us, and we're like, oh, it's dropping. <laughs> they dropped another one. Oh, boy. Yeah, that's the one. Yep, yeah. and then May was busy even just reading it. So, yeah. I mean, 
good work, humans. Like, but there's yeah. like a million work to still be done. But yes, I believe in us. Absolutely, and I, well, I mean, I I don't believe in our ability to like never have another extinction on the planet. But like, this is fair. Um, but absolutely, I don't. I I think that we can get out of this without a million. I think so too. Let's right. do it. Let's do it. And as part of that, let's meet with an actual non-extinct currently existing on the planet organism, despite the fact that I kind of feel like it's from another planet. Um, definitely from Earth, but totally awesome. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Can it be both? <laughs> yeah. Hello, oh, beautiful. Oh, hi, baby. Go. What is that noise? <laughs> this is Kismet. She's an African crested porcupine, and she is rattling her hollow quills that are just on the middle of her tail here. You want to go back in? You can if you want. And I have all the treats over here. Here, Hank. It's on my earring. Those oh, yeah. are hers. If you want to, you one of the step hollow on ones. That? Here, let me get that off of you. Here's this some is more. Good. I don't have to touch the actual porcupine. Well, look at that. I'm here for you. My jewelry. Hi, sweetheart. Seems like she's very Hi, placid and cool. Hi, sweet. Yeah, she is. She yeah, loves want, humans. Hi, baby. She's like, yes, please. Hi, baby girl. Oh. <laughs> so she was raised around Hi, humans, sweet. and uh -huh. so she knows humans are safe and often come with food. It's just new locations that make her a little bit nervous. Mm -hmm. How do you uh, clean a porcupine? Uh, Why would you clean? Them they before? smell. Are you are you talking about the smell or is no? Like, just like if you if you need to dust them, they get a little if they. Um, they like being covered in dust, yeah. <laughs> so they will they will then just go and bathe in dust right after you're oh, done. So you don't want to, <laughs> you don't don't want to tickle them with a the dust. So okay. she's called an African crested porcupine. Yeah. She has the crest on her head there, nice and mohawk. when she feels threatened, she'll take her little tutu, <laughs> and uh, she'll just make it huge so she looks really big, and then she'll. She'll do that rattling that you heard when she first came out as a warning. She'll also take her back feet and stomp them on the ground. And all of those things are going to be visual and audio warnings to like say, uh, you've messed up if you've gotten this close to this animal. Uh, and then the warning colors as well. So if you are that close to an African crested porcupine, you're in danger yes. of becoming <laughs> hit by their quills. And uh -huh. and when I say hit, I don't mean like, they can't shoot their quills. Right. They're just modified hair, so they can't like shoot them off any more than we can shoot our hairs off. But what they do is they use them to defend their territory, their young, their resources, and say a lion is trying to uh, get one of their babies, they're gonna all come together and they live in these social groups where it's mom and dad and then several ages of babies and they all mm. kind of come together and protect their, their baby. And so what I think is super cool about these quills, she can actually change the direction that she points them. Hi, so if you were to <laughs> like accidentally brush her quills, then she would take her skin and kind of move it to one direction. So instead of sticking behind her, they would point sideways. Mm. And then she'd like move toward you, like daring you to, to come closer. Have Jill's you ever own. gotten a good quill? Um, I've gotten accidental pokes. Yeah. So like she was stuck in a certain space and then she backed up and she hit my shins. And it hurts. I mean, none of them stuck in me. Um, good girl. So she is considered an old world porcupine and old world porcupines are rodents related to new world porcupines, but they develop differently. Mm. Um, they have a common ancestor, but so they do cool. not have barbs so cool. on the ends of their quills. Mm. So she has these guard quills, these guard hairs, and they don't actually mm -hmm. have points on them. Right. They just have the really good color. Some of them are very and then, long. Yes. Mm -hmm. And then these Great. ones, the second tier, yes. okay. are very thick and this. very sharp. And then there's the shorter ones that are about three, four inches long. Mm -hmm. Those ones are really intense. They're very short, very strong, and that's really the the, the painful ones, the most mm -hmm. dangerous ones. And then she has some really short ones that are just basically like a warning colors, really short ones in the middle there. And then it's the hollow ones on her tail. Right. So when she comes over here, see if I can so get up here. So many different you can quills. See so cool. The hollow quills. They're white, mm -hmm. and they're right on her tail. <laughs> and she'll just shake it, and it rattles. I love like seeing like, something like shots? rattling across species, yeah. not really a, related. You know, yeah. just to see it in a mammal and a reptile, Different and ways just that they do it too. I love it. Yeah, I think it's so cool.
it's a very, very universal warning sound. Yeah, just that sound can play that big of a role. Yeah. We take it for granted. Juicy. And that, uh, you know, mohawks also can co-evolve. Oh, the hell. You know, this, this is actually her teenage stage. This is not natural. She yeah. asked to go like okay. this. Yeah. <laughs> she even has a couple dye hairs she, there. She, <laughs> yeah, she grew it out. It was pink before the appearance today. Yeah. <laughs> so my mom made me dye it back. Yeah. I mean, that, the hair, like, it's incredible. almost itself looks, like, quilly. It's it is very thick. So go ahead and, and, and as I'm feeding her, go ahead and reach under there and just feel. Oh my God! Even your normal hair is like quills. It's really thick, coarse, and she's very oily. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so, that's not what I was expecting. Yeah, it's interesting. So yeah, they're all super like I don't know. Um, how would you describe what's that texture? Uh, like hay. Yeah, good. Yeah, like yeah. like strawish. Yeah, yeah. But then also also again very oily, thick, greasy hay. Yeah, <laughs> but like thicker yeah. hay, stronger yeah. hay. Yeah. So oh, what a pretty face. She's, she's a very beauty. Cute little eyes. So we all met. I mean, a while ago, and she was she was still little. How old? How old is she now? How old is Kismet? She is just over two years old. Yeah. And is that full grown for the species? Yes. So she she is full grown. The males get a little bit bigger than this, um, and they they live about fifteen to twenty years. Yes. They're monogamous in the wild, so they're a very social species. <gasps> wow, that's really kind of unique for mammals. I I did not know yeah. that. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. So one of my favorite things about her is her feet. Oh. She has very much like Muppet feet, and when she walks around, it almost looks like she's like stomping them around. Totally. I love sharing her because she is. So such a, she's kind of a wow animal. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, um, but they're also, I mean, they just kind of do their own thing and uh, they don't really interfere with anybody's business until they interfere with them. Right. One of the weirdest things about these guys, when we're feeding her like lots of fruit, she, she's eating pear and yam and apple mm-hmm. and grapes and she loves those. <laughs> but Clearly. she, oh, she yeah, she's like, <laughs> She just grabbed my hand. She's like, closer. <laughs> she uh, will also eat some pretty unusual things. That, or we might think they're unusual. They're not unusual for her. She eats bugs. And she'll eat small vertebrates. Like mice or, or whatnot. Uh, she'll raid a little mouse or rat <laughs> nest. Um, and birds. And uh, she will also, she needs a lot of calcium. And so to get the calcium, she will take bones from dead carcasses and she will hoard them. And they build huge burrows, really deep, very deep, long entrance burrows. Their babies stay safe down there. But they take all these bones, they'll just go grab them, store them down there, and go grab some more and store them down there. And you'll get these big bone collections down there. It's the mohawk. And then you make those teenage choices, go hang out with a dark crowd, start the mohawk, then you start collecting Collecting bones. bones. (laughs) It's it's all part of adolescence. (laughs) The problem with that is humans will then dig up these old burrows and mm-hmm. find a collection of bones and they're like wait wait is this significant what is this, significant? What is this? What is like it a, and so yeah. she's throwing them off <laughs> yeah you got, just got a bunch a of bones one? from a bunch of weird animals down yeah. there maybe they like doing collections like they're the original museum curators like maybe they like right? to do taxonomy yeah. comparisons like in free time i feel like you could if i'm a porcupine i can go down a hole but i certainly can't back out of one so they do get stuck. Not they easy. do. <laughs> and then when she goes, like, like if she were to try and crawl back there, it would be hard for her to get back out. And then she gets upset about it. And right. so then she'll start Stump. rattling. I kind of want to know, like, what shape you are under the quill. Because, like, the profile gets obscured by all of the quills. It just says slopes down and she's got a little tail. Oh, yeah? Yeah. A little tail. Yeah. I almost imagine, like, capybara kind of that yeah, stocky, kind yep. of larger. Sort of a guinea pig, like head. a huge guinea pig. Yeah. Yep. Mm-hmm. But pokey. Yeah. Yes, with a tutu of quills mm-hmm. all over her. Have you seen the full the full quill display? Oh, yeah. Um, and that's just because their natural instincts are any type of weird thing that happens. First thing you do is you show mm-hmm. off what weapons you have. So if a door, you know, wind blows a door closed or, okay. yeah. you know, like whatever. She was <laughs> yeah. a little bigger when she um, when she came out. I think it was like a noticeable difference mm-hmm. in... In she seemed bigger now. She, she's yeah, calmer. and then she's come down. Yeah, which yeah. is kind of neat. She's um, also a little bit like a lap porcupine. She will full on crawl into my lap and fall asleep. Yeah, yeah not not comfortable at mm-hmm. all for me when <laughs> right. she does that. <laughs> um, but she loves being. She loves tactile. She loves being pet. Um, so once once food is kind of out of the picture, she like just gets really into the scratches. Like, I love this. Oh, that's the worst. Yeah, you do like oh, that. Oh, good stuff. So good pet, right? 
Oh, yeah. I mean... <laughs> Sisters, uh, no. <laughs> She'll chew through everything. She's a chewer. Yes, she is even. She can chew through metal, even. So oh we have a very, very thick Dude, metal she hangs barrier. Out with bones. I mean, she's, yeah. she's through bones. Yeah. Do you throw in some bones, or do you just? Have yeah, she food? does. She oh. she eats bones. She likes gnawing on them. She likes burying them. Just throw some antlers <laughs> oh, in there. Oh, good stuff. Beef bones. Antlers, um, and then people donate beef parts and mm-hmm. beef bones, and then deer legs. No, she's great. She's like, look at me in all my glory. See, I like the idea of conservation for the sake of like, this is an awesome thing. (laughs) Right. And she's not providing me services besides joy. Yeah. So, you know. It's just she a cool example. She cleans up the bone pile. The good life. She cleans up the bone pile. Yeah, here is a here is one version of a good life. Yeah, a diverse, right. a diverse version. Yeah, of a good life. diverse. Yeah, yeah. enjoyment. Yeah. Just them species them. like this are just such that reminder for me that intrinsic. Just like look at this. Like yeah. this is incredible. Yeah, this is just incredible. Wonderful. Thank yeah. you, Jesse. If Thanks, you want to see Jessie. more of what Jesse does, you have a YouTube channel at YouTube.com/slash/AnimalWondersMontana, yep. taking care of. Hundreds of animals. Yeah, it's a lot them. of fun. It's yeah. it's a different thing every day. Yeah, I bet. Uh, thank you, Brett, thank for you, informing Hank. me. I feel informed. Uh, it's and, step one. <laughs> yeah. If you want to see more of Brett, you can see Brett at youtube.com slash nature league and also here on SciShow at SciShow Psych. Hey.